every shirt I have now has holes in it. Literally, I've had all these shirts forever, and they all seem to be wearing out the same time. Yo YouTube, what is up? My name is Scott Adamson, welcome back to the channel. And if you saw last week's video, we were talking about 80-20 fasteners. And in today's video, we're gonna kinda continue that 80-20 fastener talk, and I'm gonna show you guys how I actually went about attaching my 80-20 cabinetry to the van frame. So let's roll that intro, and we'll see you on the other side. Boom. All right, let's jump in here. Today we're gonna to be talking about attaching the 8020 to the actual van itself. If you watched one of my previous videos on 8020, you'll know one of the reasons I used it was just sheer to its deuce, was due to its sheer strength. And a lot of that strength comes with how you actually fasten it to the van that itself. Because if you don't do that properly, a lot of the added strength you get from the 8020 really becomes irrelevant. And after finally finishing my upper cabinets, and I can do safely do this, I think I'm satisfied with how this is turning out. So when it comes to fastening the 8020 to the frame of the vehicle, something you're going to want to get really familiar with is these. And these are called riv nuts. You are going to be using a lot of riv nuts to fasten the 8020 to the frame of the vehicle. So what is a riv nut? A riv nut is basically it's a threaded insert that you drill a hole into the side of the van which is the exact diameter of the uh, riv nut so I use a caliper to measure my riv nuts and then I find a drill bit that matches that width with the caliper so you drill your hole and then you use what's called a riv nut tool and you put the riv nut on the riv nut tool and then place the riv nut in the hole and just like a regular rivet gun you use compression and that squeezes the riv nut into place and gives you a super tight fit that's not going to spin and now you have a nice threaded insert where you can thread machine screws or bolts directly into the frame of the vehicle basically that could be the end of the video that's how I attach all my 8020 pretty much is riv nut so you know how riv nuts work, then you know how to attach 8020 to the vehicle. If you don't really know how riv nuts work, or you're looking to see how I use the riv nuts, then stick around. A few things to note when using riv nuts is that you'll probably find the term riv nuts, rivet nut, those I found to be the same thing, and plus nuts. Plus nuts are a bit different, and I have heard that plus nuts are better. I actually did buy some of them and use some of them, but with the riv nut tool that I purchased, it doesn't work that well with plus nuts because to compress a plus nut, it requires a greater throw in the tool to get the proper compression. So I have to do it in two stages and I'm just so worried I'm not going to get the right compression and it's going to spin in place, which is not a good thing if your riv nut or plus nut spins. So I actually haven't been using the plus nuts. I've just been using the riv nuts and fingers crossed I haven't had any spinners and it's been going good. So maybe look into plus nuts and riv nuts, but if you do buy plus nuts, a riv nut, the plier kind doesn't really work that well for it. So keep that in mind. Another thing I'm going to just touch on quickly is riv nut sizes. So I'm doing a metric build, which when you're dealing with wood doesn't really matter. That doesn't mean anything. But when you're working with 8020, it kind of does because I'm buying metric size uh, extrusion profile. So I'm buying 30 millimeter and 40 millimeter. In the US, it would be one inch and inch and a half, I believe. But I'm using 30 series and 40 series. And then my riv nuts match my bolts. And my bolts are also standard or metric sizes. They're not imperial. So I'm using some M5s, M6s, M8s, and M10s. I don't know what those cross reference to when it comes to the um, standard versions of it, but when it comes for riv nuts, I use M6s, M8s, and M10s. Really, you can get away with the M6s and M8s. I used M10s in the floors to fasten the bed frame down, and I think that's really overkill. I think M8s would have been fine, and the M10s are just big, hard to deal with, and overkill. You gotta factor in, okay, I'm bolting just down to the sheet metal of the van. Do I really need an M10 there? Like, the van material is gonna rip away long before the bolt. So, again, sizes, I'm using mainly M6s, and M8s, and I happen to use a couple M10s. If I did it over, I would just stick with M6s and 8s. They're plenty strong for this. So now that you know the answer to fastening 8020 to the vehicle is riv nuts, what is the hardest part about riv nuts? Well, the hardest part about riv nuts for me was just all of the planning ahead that it requires. It's not like when you use wood strapping in the van and then you just know roughly where that strapping is down the side. And as long as you know where that is, you can just 
fire in a screw there. These rib nuts are precise threaded inserts into the vehicle, so you have to know precisely where that threaded insert is so you can thread it through. So for example, if I want to attach my upper cabinets, I have to find that threaded insert through the ceiling in the exact spot, and I don't want to drill a big hole. I need to drill a hole just big enough that a washer can cover it and find it to attach my mounting point. So that's been the hardest thing is just all of the planning ahead and knowing where all your fastening points are going to be. I think at this point it's probably best if we just jump on inside the van and I can show you kind of where I use the rib nuts and how I use them because I think it'll make a lot more sense inside the van if I can show you. So let's jump on in there. So this is going through the marine vinyl ceiling and then into a rib nut in the ribs of the van. So it was super hard to make sure that we had the holes right in our perforated marine vinyl ceiling panels to make sure that these holes all lined up and everything was in the right space. Using these angle brackets gives you a little bit of latitude because if you're off a little bit, you could actually slot the angle bracket and give you a little bit of leeway. We didn't actually need it, but um, that's why I use the angle brackets because if I needed to, I could have slotted it and it would have let me move this whole piece in or out to get everything lined up properly. But all of these go straight into rib nuts that are in the uh, ribs underneath the ceiling panels and they're super strong. It's not going anywhere. So I'm super, super happy with how this all turned out. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video on how I use the rib nuts to attach the 8020 to the framing of the vehicle. So far, I think it's working really well as frustrating at the start as using the rib nuts was. It's just a ton of work kind of finding those ones in the ceiling and marking them and all that stuff. You just you just have to be patient at the end of the day. So if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. And if you have any questions on 8020, just ask them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to them. And if it's something that needs another video, I'll make another video. Hope you liked it. See you in the next one.